in Westfield to order at 7 o'clock p.m. on June 28, 2021. We respectfully acknowledge that Grand Bay Westfield exists traditional Wollstokeway land, the lands of Wabanaki people. respect between equal nations. The river that runs by our town is known as Wollstock, along which number one thing that became clear that we needed to spend time reflecting some of our local indigenous community to help us chart a path forward thoughtfully and responsibly. A path that was respectful to our nation. Fight where they can no longer remain. I'm very proud of our council and our leadership team for leading and living with our values. I am thankful for our embrace of our actions. I am so proud to live here. Thank you all. I have attendance. Let the record show that we have full attendance. And Speaker. Item three, approval of the order of business and approval of additions. Council of the town. Second. Any questions on the motion? All in favor? I I can I am six point one is a All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. On 6.2, John Taylor toward more equitable, democratic, responsible, and efficient local government in New Brunswick. It's a 20-minute presentation. We're looking forward to hearing what you have to say, John. Right. You have the floor. So it didn't give a very short name, did it? <laughs> Subject 
for the Center for Urban Policy. I feel I should uh, clarify that. We've put together an argument for how to resolve the long standing achievability so that this isn't just another false start because we've uh, had quite a few of those. Uh, next slide, please. In the report. They didn't commission it and they have not approved of it, so we're not representing their views in any way. It's an independent assessment of local governance in New Brunswick. The British Columbia Regional District model has been referenced in many, many government reports over the years. But it's never really been given the full hypothetical treatment exploring its benefits for New Brunswick before. And that's what we wanted to provide. Given to a lot of different people, and it's been getting you know, some pretty good response. Next slide. The slow overall population growth. The relative decline of rural areas compared to the growing cities, population is aging, and the many small local government units that lack the efficiency. We also have local governance reform. A lack of elected representation and political voice for, represent for residents of unincorporated areas, unfair distribution of tax burdens relative to Concerns about sprawling and ribbon development near urban centers, over centralization and opaque decision making at the provincial level. 1971, around there, the debate over municipal reform has resolved around three alternatives the full municipalization of unincorporated areas, we call that the donut approach, consolidation of urban centers with their peripheries, and the regionalization. Keeps the fights contained to just the eight or so regions with let you get at the structural issues. And regionalization facilitate the broad based collaboration that we've hoped for. Patterns of local government system to British Columbia in the 1960s. First is that they're proven to function well. If you need an example, it's right on the other side of the country. Beyond that though, they establish local government representation for residents of unincorporated areas. They're a vehicle for joint activities across outdated urban and rural boundaries. They're flexible and adaptable to local conditions. They enable subsidiarity or the Boards are composed of representatives of three types of entities. to elect directors, kind of like a ward in a municipality. 
and each entity is represented in loose proportion to their share of the population. But the formula is actually intended to over-represent so that the more populous places have influence in proportion to their financial contribution. This enables compromise between the interests of large and small units and give, give all sizes different but equal reasons to buy into the structure wish for its success. Many functions are financed by user fees, but those that aren't are financed by user fee or are financed by direct profit taxation budgets in incorporated areas. But not all services are likely to be provided in all areas, and unaffected units don't need to participate in decisions or finance. All tailored to local. But their core functions are solid waste management and emergency planning. The purpose of our, our regional districts was always to be permissive rather than prescriptive. Next slide, please. So this is an example. In municipalities, but the rest are divided into the six electoral areas you can see up there. Representation is decided according to a legislative formula. The uh, province establishes a voting unit by legislation. In this case, it's 2,000 people. The voting, the, the voting strength of each unit, in essence, its weighted vote for financial matters, is the unit's population divided by the voting unit. The number of directors is one. Crucially, representation Regional district. Right. You see, they're actually pretty arbitrary because if the model is accepted, the voting unit is absolutely a matter of negotiation. In the simplest terms, though, larger the board will get. It can get pretty massive. There's, there's downsides to both extremes here, so it's absolutely going to be For the purpose of So you can see there, Grand Oasis voting strength is exaggerated by the formula. Same thing with St. Martin's, except that's to a far greater extent. Population is about 4%. Administration of how it benefits the smaller units. Even though they're if you use the 3,000 unit, they only end up with 36% of a British club. In rural areas, between incorporated and unincorporated areas, they have mandatory functions, including solid waste management. And they can bump a lot of other functions, including everything that's currently done in LSDs. They can levy contributions. But inequalities that come with that system, and it doesn't affect the electoral disenfranchisement of people living in LSDs. And finally, the one entity, one vote representation model, it, it disincentivizes. So that's something that the, uh, the, the formula tries to offset. Next slide, please. 
So to realize the benefits of the regional service commissions, New Brunswick would have to do several things. It would have to abolish the LSDs. Complicated, but what's really important is what isn't going to happen. British Columbia has shown that with flexible and proportionate regional districts, large-scale amalgamation is no longer seen as the go-to solution for all problems. It was the regional. now and in the future. It's, uh, it's really interesting and it, you know, not only has an application for New Brunswick, but it does have a specifically local application for Grand Bay Westfield. Um, does anybody have any questions or discussion for, for John on his report? So one quick quick So the note we had the um, set up there, a slide that had the example for the Monday region district. You had directors who were part of the regional service district, but each municipality would maintain their, their elected representatives. Yep. Yeah. So it's kind of a layer. Different for the office. Yes. Yes. So there wouldn't be a huge change for us there. No, this is very, very interesting to us in general. What we're talking about is that we heard a lot from residents of Grand West from the fear of becoming part of, yes. of St. John and the fear of non So This is kind of one of those things you can take advantage of the broader. Things that I find interesting about this model over taxing mm -hmm. and spending. Yeah. So that Invited by the fact that we take a lot of fear of those people of amalgamation, whether it's fearing to be amalgamated in with us yeah. or us, the big fear is some amalgamation into St. John. We've seen what happens in Halifax, yeah. and mega cities don't necessarily. when Lancaster was not part of St. John and Lancaster had to be incorporated into St. John and the people that lived in Lancaster were not happy campers. This area and people were not happy at the end of the day. Yeah. So uh, this makes more sense. said and 
There's got to be organizational costs. That Zach's big uh, contribution to this, well, he, he, he contributed most of it, but, uh, <laughs> was he has, I think he was in Halifax when they did this, the big city amalgamation, mm -hmm. and he saw how divisive it was. Mm -hmm. And so that's been a real personal drive for him to help. If you could just give the Coles Notes version of the difference between forced municipal incorporation. Representative Forced municipal incorporation, amalgamation, and representative. The Francophone Municipal Association. How are those borders? Amalgamation does tell that. So if you think about what's in the green paper, one of the options that was given was just basically you made everything inside of them until you got against each other. And so Not annexing half, say, don't necessarily. We're not. Was that an Incentives to inefficient uh, development patterns in areas surrounding more urban centers. We kind of already do that anyway. Like our commercial district is on the boundary of the St. John. And a regional plan can try to encourage that in other areas. But my power will be that treatment. Yeah, since 1965. So around the same time that we were getting rid of our counties, they were building these because in British Columbia, they counties or anything like that. So you really did have. Uh, 
there's people who have never had it. And as far as I council building because they the various sort of entities that were in that area but what they did was create something that is voluntarily taking on new services, there's a list of a thousand plus things that various commissions have taken on. Like they, they do everything from like some of them operate local TV rebroadcasting, some of them operate airports. This is not something we need to strive to do, but it's evidence of the flexibility of the model. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Have any more questions for, for John? No? Let me that. Me that these areas are also still able to, to a great extent. So um, I think for our province, it's a, I think it's a good model. Yeah, and I mean, the ones that they have, like the city team regional district, like that's bigger than probably the entire province, right? Like there isn't the assumption, like with a regional municipality, that everyone's going to get the same identity. There's an acknowledgement that within a region like this, people have different communities, they have different identities, and that's what So if we have no further questions for, for John, I'd, I'd like to thank you for coming in and oh, that report. And as an aside, I'd like to point out that John is also the son of our development officer, David Taylor, which is mostly very proud, but very talented and smart son you have. So, so that's, uh, that's great. Uh, John, are we able to put this report on our website by any chance? Is John uh, we can, we have uh, his report that he's presented. How we That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. So, could I have a motion? June 24th, 2021. The motion is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of June 14th, 2021 as presented. Thank you, Councillor Dave. I have a second. Deputy Mayor Tool, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? The motion is carried. Thank you. Okay. Item. 7.2 email poll of June 16th, 2021 regarding Westfield 
COVID-19 protocols requiring two meters distancing between groups in outdoor informal gatherings and notification to the RCMP and Be something that is uh, resembling, you know, the four days. Can you need to explain what R1, 2, and 3 are, or what that will come at a later date? That will come at a later date. It's usually fairly common across the kingdom what those are. Um, Dave can correct me if I'm wrong. R1 would be someone who lives in a home uh, mm -hmm. that's not attached to anything that's in the yard. R2 would be more justification. Uh, and 3, David. Just a multiple. Yeah, so be. Any other discussion on the motion? I just wanted to point out that this uh, that this uh, submission to be. Process for local government reform. So it was important that uh, that we put together a comprehensive, responsive, and thoughtful um, position so that the province knows where we stand and what we hope for and, and what we think. So um, I want to thank uh, Council and staff for, for putting this together and, uh, and John. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Council for the of the town of Granby. dollars and 51 cents. So, so thank you, Councillor Day. We have a second. second. Councillor McIntyre. The RCMP contract is paid on a quarterly basis, and uh, the overall total is uh, uh, 722520 dollars uh, or something. Yeah, $722,520, that was in 2021, 
Last year, it was just over $700,000. On a per capita basis, that is $146 for every man, woman, child who lived in Grand Bay West in 2016. Um, number 15, is the town supplying EpiPens? They are, that's great. And they are where are they located? So the town joined the State Carolina program two or three years ago. And so we have EpiPens here in the central uh, at the Lions uh, Club Levy and in Oro Cruz. Okay. So Need to be able to get your magazine, a CEO, I get one, and then Sasha. Uh, what is this magazine? Yeah, it is. In to uh, uh, church, you know, magazines. And then the other one that we currently don't have a subscription to would be Public Sector Digest, um, which again is uh, around policies for municipalities. Uh, I just have two more. I can go to the other 40 and 49. Um, and the power and cleaning, are those monthly bills? Or and we pay in the summer $10,000 a month for street lights. That goes up the way. And the um, clean uh, last. Ten thousand dollars a month for street lights. That's it. Yeah. yeah um, for council's information, there was a meeting in the fall. I don't remember Councilor Day or Dillon's. Remember Margot Craig, the former executive director yes. of you know, if I've got the stat wrong, uh, but
discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Westfield proceed and file the RBCC committee list 2020. We have a motion. So moved. Thank you, Councillor Day. Second. Thank you, Councillor Bailman. Any questions or discussions? March or April, I don't remember the date anymore. Uh, <coughs> requested that. Uh, before the money for the recreation. So it's actually for 21 and not for 20. So we'll just make that change as a typo and we'll continue with your discussion. Thank, thank you, John. Is there any questions? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? The motion is carried. Thank you. On to item 11. There being none, we'll move on to 12 petitions. Thank you very much. Some background on uh, on the procedural bylaw is that uh, um, the procedural bylaw, which was number 106, I think. I would like to go to was the inclusion of the ability for council to attend electronically when we're done COVID. Yes. I, if you want to have to be We do it for every meeting. It costs just over three hundred dollars to be able to use it. I guess. And then it would be in the mailboxes before four meetings. So there. And do you send a newsletter monthly or? Uh, no. Now, uh, go 
was out against needed. Uh, it's something that I'd like to address as part of the communication package with the council <laughs> and see whether or not there's any solutions that we should uh, that, uh, no, it's a good question. So we're at the moment. I have a question. I have one more actually. I wrote a few. Um, it's written 11, but in brackets it says 10. So, uh, yeah. Um, I left that that way because the old one was written at 11. My suggestion. at 9 3 when we're starting at 7. So that's still three and a half hours. You know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, to me those you're going to get mad, you're going to think about it, it's 2 or 3 o'clock, and you have an appointment at 8 o'clock in the morning. You know, if, if, as I explained to the mayor, um, if we have meetings that go on too long, like I anticipate tonight, might. Are you asking us for advisement as to what time you want us to plan yes. there? Yeah, what time would council like? I'd like to You're right. This is the length of the meeting. And if we're going to be transparent, then we need to have time to discuss these things appropriately so they understand why we're making the decisions we're making. And we don't need to. Consensus on that recommendation. Citizens liaison. And I also like the second one, Child and Youth Liaison. But I was trying to wrap my head.
because it can work both ways. Question. The members must be present to the quorum. I knew what this, um, I'd like to know what the definition of member is. Does it include the mayor and five councillors, or is it just the council? of counselors, and that would be very important to making that calculation. Mayor is the number of council. Uh, member is just easier to say than counselors and members. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Day brought up the point about liaisons. Yes. Uh, I would like some direction as to if you want to delete that, if you want to keep so we, need to, we need to resolve this. The public who are watching this evening don't see what's coming. And we have a whole new community structure coming. And we're moving to try to make the committees going to have it covered and it could cause confusion. Yes. Any council bailments? What's your opinion? Uh, I think the more the better, I don't know. It's good. I don't know. Well, I, I just don't want it with the new structure coming to cause confusion. I think the new structure could cover it. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think the point is that if, if there's a redundancy, that would be there. Each front of committee, and you know, we're all seniors in, in the mix as well. Um, the idea is that it, it would be it would be redundant. So. Part of two is communication. We're really looking at communication, communication of the town. So, the part of, part of our messaging and part of the other is who to contact and how to contact and where to go. So, I think we will definitely be addressing it, might not be through that specific session. There's merit to that. Um, However, there are other things to consider. Where uh, the, the deputy mayor positions were. You want to rotate the deputy mayor position or uh, the third option is that the deputy mayor is elected by council at the first meeting of the new council. Uh, so those, those three options. And Madam Mayor, can I make one other suggestion? Um,
change model. But um, you know, where it's, it's a new council and, and a new group around. respect to how the deputy mayor was chosen and the only way you could become deputy mayor was if you were a councillor at large so um and that was uh that wasn't equitable for the rest of It's a, it's a, there's a benefit in having a longer standing term to be able to have people comfortable in their positions. So that would be my thoughts on this. But I'm, I'm comfortable with the highest votes. I think we don't have an issue here because we don't have the board system. So it's not working. Okay. Well, for the representation here at the table, and we've had some really incredible deputy mayors. And I think Erin, once Erin gets her feet under her, she's going to be a good one as well. So, why change if it works? Why change it? Thank you, Councillor Day. Councillor McIntosh Lawrence. I agree with the way that I think we should listen to the um, but again, I would also, I wouldn't have a problem with voting um, deputy mayor. I would be This is the first reading. Uh, Council, what I was suggesting to you is I'll make these uh, edits um, for the next council meeting. And you can go back. Is this really what you want? Uh, and then you can either uh, affirm it or say you want to rethought something. And we'll do the second, and then we'll advertise. You know, so I'm third reading to be the second meeting in July. So there's ample. Wondering, are there any changes that council wants to have? Uh, land acknowledgement is there. Um, we've changed the time to 7 o'clock. Uh, 
Council get a vote, please. Madam Mayor, yes. Uh, I'd also like to recommend to Council that this doesn't show up here, but as we go forward items, uh, I'd like to say we get four or five pieces of correspondence. Um, we get requests from government officials. Yes, please. Um, so the province has been very clear, the legislation is very clear, is that information in the closed session, uh, the promise is very clear, no information session, and the legislation is very clear. Only one of these 10 categories uh, is something able to be discussed. And uh, we do track them here uh, so that we to Mr. Speaker here is that the federal government, provincial government would be as transparent as we public session, we're asking all these questions in public session. Because if you're in our discussion, Discussing something, and there's nobody except yourselves, but you already had discussions about it to begin with. So I really like this. Glad to hear that. And I really like the changes. I mean, I don't like 
get the community to understand more about what's going on here, um, that's a good thing. Sorry. Uh, oh. I'll just have to say, uh, going back to questions and stuff that was brought up, uh, I hope Council still has the same level of curiosity uh, in the big call of the next election. <laughs> yes, yes, that's why I said difficult, uncomfortable. Yeah. Must be done, right? But I think the more transparency there is in how we come to the decisions that we come to generates trust. The Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield allocate funding for the position of CFO with the imperative to hire a CFO as soon as reasonably possible. And the This motion before we go to discussion. Yeah, um, we do, we currently have um, an accounting clerk, and then we have an accountant who provides consulting services on an occasional basis. Um, as a new person here, I was a little startled uh, with the budget of eight million dollars. Uh, that's the extent of the financial support that council has. Uh, and there's some, you know, long-term planning on uh, projects that should be done. Some of the stuff needs to be done annually. Some of the stuff needs to be done every three, four, five years. And also, there's just reporting instruments and stuff like that that council should have on an ongoing basis. There should be information about. Uh, however, uh, if council need decisions about how they're going to invest taxpayer dollars, they need the information to support it. And the question isn't always about how much does it cost to invest in it. The question is also how much are we going to lose by not investing in it. And at this point, I think the cost of investing in it is less than the cost of not doing it. And some of the projects that we need to look at is you know, a comprehensive municipal information system. Most municipalities have a system everything from work orders and works and parks to dog tags. And you look it up and the uh, department heads just need to click on a report generating button to know, uh, you know that we've got a, an emergency and where is the money going to come from and they can identify that. Uh, we contract out a lot of work. We really Control is one issue. Uh, you know, uh, I forgot the squeaky clean shades mm -hmm. and shades uh, green. green. Fantastic jobs. You know, they do an incredible job. I think we, our community looks fantastic. Um, but are we, you know, on a value basis? Awesome. 
And I think having someone with the accounting know-how to figure out, you know, the cost benefit of you know, do we discontinue fees, uh, do we maintain fees, what do we do? Uh, you know, we need someone with a different tool set. Uh, we really should be having a tree or operating budget. You know, right now, council goes from year to year. So this looks right. But what about You know, frankly, in my seat, I'm a little bit nervous. I think you'd tell the guys, or if you ask the, the leadership team, uh, I'm, I'm a little twitchy about A long term financial plan, looking at operations, looking at capital, looking at all these things together. And, and especially how do they fit the council strategic plan, uh, the venture management, budget development, leadership? You know, I could go on with some more things. Uh, but really, I see a huge hole here. We had the consultants in, made the presentation, they identified the same large hole. Uh, I'm asking council to plug the hole. Other questions or discussions on the motion? Council and the new mayor. The question that all came out during our orientation and during the first council meeting and this council meeting, they all questions that a lot of the questions wouldn't have appeared. And we had the types of information that you the amount of questions and the amount of time. You yeah, tell that. <laughs> <laughs> right. the, new, yeah, the, new, the new mayor is uh, a little rusty on procedure. You only learn by making mistakes. <laughs> well, I'm. We 
we have any further discussion or questions on the motion now, we're actually allowed to have a discussion. Or Uh, okay, contrary mind. Possible. Do I have a motion? Thank you, Deputy Mayor Tool. Do I have a second? Thank you, Councillor McIntosh Lawrence. Do you have any questions on or discussion on the motion? We get this done cheaper at the local area. This kind of work on the machine or I don't know what. John, can you uh the the the, the tender of yes no but There's no more to go or um, no, no, there, there's no more. Game. Well, there, there, there. Any more questions? Um, um, yes. We do do email calls. Yes. Uh, yes. For issues like that, but again, that's still a 24 36 hour yeah. uh, delay. And I do know. Development incentive grants, Lennon Estates, River Valley Drive. The motion is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield approve this agreement in principle between the Town of Grand Bay Westfield and 697800 NB Corp for a residential property. Based on the current determined post construction by Service New Brunswick, the grant would equal $193,725 with annual grant payments between $49,815 and $27,675 over five years, and if qualified by completion of NB Power New Home Energy Savings Program reimbursement of building permit fees. I have a motion. Thank you. That's second. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a discussion on the motion. Any questions? I really hope that this happens. And we're looking at ways to keep seniors.
for the day. Do you have any other comments? procurement policy. May I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Councillor Day. A second. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Tool. Do we have any questions on the motion? Maybe just a bit of a brief description of what the procurement policy will do. Just to... okay. John, do you want to uh, speak to that, please? Yeah. Uh, first off, I want to thank uh, the CEO of Hampton. Uh, they did all the hard work this past build this policy and basically I just swapped out Hampton for Drinking Westdale and so I want to thank Richard for that. Um, it's designed to do two things. Help us be nimble as a as a business that money is being spent the way it should be spent and two uh, not the tire of council's time. Uh, I think that kind of summarizes it in a nutshell so that more than that, but I think that's the next job for you. One more quick note, you mentioned that Hampton, is this similar to other, do other flights on municipalities have similar type? Yeah, it's very similar. Uh, like I said, Hampton did this. Uh, Richard's comment was basically, they just grabbed it out of the pyramid act and put it in regarding municipalities. And you guys are just all kind of weird how it might be meshed with the provincial procurement act, because I know we have the to do it for the whole procurement process at a certain amount before that we're able to make our policy. Yeah. Yeah. Does it, it, if I just say comment. Yes, because we were bound by I think we had three different training groups we had to watch out for. So sometimes it got a bit complicated. We just I think the simple route was the minimum threshold for any one of them, and I just went with that. We have any further questions on the policy? I just like to point out that I, I like uh, that you've articulated the funds transfer. <laughs> I, I was just excited. Fun. Fair to signing checks. <laughs> <laughs> Go electronic. Can I just address that, please? Um, people may be You know, have it review the list and it's not fun. Yeah, well, there's still that layer of accountability mm -hmm. based on each one. Yeah. Oh, darn. Here's your sensitive bench. <laughs> all right, if there are no further questions, um, uh, do we all in favor? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Okay, the motion is carried. We are on. 2020. The motion is that the town, the council of the town of Granby and Westfield receive and file the report. The report is to be made available per Local Governance Act 2017. Thank uh, Nicole. She put all the pictures in, made it look nice, she formatted it. Uh, the leadership team provided the photos that we see and some of the information. Uh, 
friendly than that. You can look at it, and the information will be easy to read right at a glance through maps, graphs, and tables. Uh, so that's Today. Um, I have one question. Such as and people don't stop to think of the costs associated even to running. as counselors were paid, and um, expenses in that. But I have a question that came through that per diem and, and reviewing this document. And so my question expenses. Can you come back to this table and put in for your per diem and expenses? I think Bill could really relate on how sometimes people know the system. There's no double dipping, Councillor. Okay. I have not come at all. Uh, if I may share, uh, I had an incident where I had uh, a member of the board that I was chairing uh, who received uh, a from the organization which I was chairing. And then from the local municipality, we turn it into the board. Okay. No, no yeah. double dipping. Good. So, that's good. I don't know. So, uh, and there's a lot of committee work that people are going to be doing. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Day. Do we have any other questions? development document so the nicer it looks the more attractive it is actually you raised a good point uh, here uh, I would like to put the budget next year the advertising tool so there's something else on the issue. All in favor? Aye. Aye. of capital. The motion is that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield reallocate up to $22,000 of the capital for new siding for the front of the community centre to a structural conditional assessment with the remaining amount of 108000 to be tra transferred to reserves and dedicated to new siding for the 22. I have a motion. John, can you give us some background on this, please? First, uh, I think send my condolences to the recreation director. Another year of life stability is <laughs> getting siding. Um, generational. Uh, if you look at the siding, you can see holes in it. Uh, so we do have issues. However, uh, there are a couple of reasons why we're bringing this to council to reallocate the money. One is uh, we put in a grant application with uh, ICEF IBA. Don't remember the acronym offhand. My apologies, council, that's sort an of acronym I view. It's the uh, Inter-Canadian Anyways, Investment Canada Infrastructure Program for the Interprovincial, wow, 
size or a little bit larger. Uh, you know, we've talked about the fact that you know, we're going to uh, hopefully sooner or later have a CFO. Uh, we're running out of space. We're running out of storage space and this you know, space. Uh, we should have a good understanding of what our building can handle and not handle. And uh, so we should put that forward now and then we can go ahead with some idea of what we're going to do in 22. with the software uh, developer to see how we can include utilization rates for our facilities. Uh, other than that, I think there's a lot of reports that council currently gets that don't make this, these reports will help you make, help us give you better information to make better decisions. I put it that way. However, we need administration and council as to what should be in, what should be out. And I still take more than one meeting to do that. Yeah, well, it'll take a while. I like that you've got every objective and goal and the key performance. And, and 
knowing where we are at any given point in time. and what issues you and your team are facing with the directions we're giving. So I would really like Thank you, Councillor Day. There is no more discussion. Growth Agency. Deputy Mayor Aaron Toole to the Greater St. John Regional Facilities Commission. Deputy Mayor Aaron Toole is chair and chair of the Strategic Priority. Lawrence, Councillor Beverly Day. Committee. Deputy Mayor Aaron Toole to the Municipal Advisory Corporation Committee. Councilor Jim Bell Jim Balcom and Kelly Thompson to the Planning on Anne's Wind to the Safety Labor Management Committee. Continue the appointments of the Substandard Property Appeals Committee consisting of Pete gallagher jett Bill Watts, Nadia McFarlane, Appoint Mayor Brittany Merrifield to the Funding Regional Services Commission for Legislation. Councillor Stephanie McIntosh Lawrence as Chair and Councillor Beverly Day as Deputy Chair of the Strategic Priority Community Vitality. Councillor John Bailmans to Pro Kids. McIntosh Lawrence to the River Valley Community Center. Councillor John Bailmans to River Valley Seniors. And Councillor John Councillor at Large supporting, communicating, and liaison each of the strategic. I have a motion. Thank you, Councillor McIntosh Lawrence. Do I have a second? Thank you, Councillor. We, um, I just want to make sure we, we have our tentative strategic pillars and uh, we, we are Question in America. The committee for the regional committee. I believe it's a regional committee, isn't that John? Uh, it's a legislative committee, it's a town committee. Uh, it's our development office.
Uh, if there's no further discussion on the motion, all in favor? Aye. Contrary, my Yes, Councillor. Uh, are we in consensus that uh, Councillor Day should be the, the Councillor of Iron All right. Nine. Now we're on to fifteen ten. And this is a coalition of communities for inclusion. For UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, is calling on municipalities to join a coalition of inclusive municipalities and to be part of UNESCO's international. encourages its members to join and whereas three municipal governments in Canada along with other levels of government have responsibilities under Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms as well as federal provincial and territorial human rights codes and therefore have an important role to play in combating be it resolved that for the town of Grand Bay Westfield integral part of the municipality's vision, strategy, and realization of the common commitments, the municipality will cooperate with other organizations and jurisdictions, including other levels of The municipality will set its priorities. will exchange its expertise and share best practices with other municipalities on an annual basis on actions undertaken toward the realization of these common commitments. The town field, June 28, 2021 authorize the mayor to sign the form of 
Thank you, Deputy Mayor Tool. Was a, this came out of the events that happened this week. Past week. We have any questions or discussions? We're we're agreeing to develop our plan of action before the week. So I'm actually really excited on this. I think already we put our focus on community community and trying to make decisions that really really show this commitment. So I'm really pleased that we'll be reporting on this. Westfield adopt articles 47. We have a motion. So moved. Today, seconded by Councillor Bell. Thank you very much. Um, You were integral in helping us put this together. I'd like some background for, for our people at home. Yeah, so there's six uh, calls to action. I've asked council to adopt five this evening. Uh, one, 43, is, it's been years since I've read the uh, UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And I'm just a little too foggy to recommend that right now. Uh, I want to review the language uh, around it. Um, number 47 really If you provide annual reports and any current data requested for reconciliation by that council. Uh, again, that's more provincial, uh, federal, um, but and I'd just like to point out uh, even our tax policies can be. Uh, Manipulated in such a way as to be discriminatory. Uh, and uh, uh, so that's just an example. Uh, 50 education to all of the town staff, not just the leadership team, regarding um, the history and legacy of uh, residential schools, the Declaration of Rights on Indigenous Peoples, treaties and whatnot. Uh, I just like sources that are available uh, for this. The University of Alberta has one. I think the University of uh, uh,
working with us. But it is not sitting in that shell. That six dollar calls to action for us. Just recommending all of them except for 43 at this time, and and not bring back 43 uh, no later than the meeting of the 26th. Thank you, thank you, John. I just want to say this is a really, really pleased and highlighted 57 and if I gap that uh, public servants at federal, provincial, and municipal levels have in this area. So, since we call upon federal, provincial, territorial, and municipal governments to provide education to public servants on the history of Aboriginal peoples, including the history and legacy of residential schools, the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, treaties and Aboriginal rights, Indigenous law, and Aboriginal crown relations. So this is something that we can start now. But we don't know that until we know the truth. So I'm really, really happy with this. And I think it's fine. So it's fine. You made some very important points. So thank you for sharing that. I think it's important that we recognize our first nations and children that were torn from their parents and died. And the parents wondered what happened to them. And it went on for generations. My biggest fear is the fact that we did have a residential school in uh, that. They haven't gotten there yet. And I'm very fearful of how many more deaths we're going to see in this country. And I think it's a sad day in our country. And my hope is, is that down the road um, we can come together as a great populace of this country. And it's a sad time now that we need to live, learn from the past so we can not have it. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, want to make the point that when the news came out on last Thursday following the initial discovery of 215 children in British Columbia, uh, I mean, I, I know I'm not the only one that didn't sleep much on Thursday night. And, uh, you know, so and uh, and I and I and I know this this council is is living by actually taking meaningful action. It's it's I mean it's huge. Um, we're we're leading the way in terms of of how and you know nations all across the country. You know we we see you we hear you. 
your value. This is important. So um, this is a, this is an important initiative. So, we have any more discussion on on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. The motion is. Reconciliation. Bay Westfield moved to proceed with providing new Indigenous naming on street signs for both Woolstock Drive and Narapis Road in recognition of traditional Malice. Extra signs, uh, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, there won't be so that we'll have one sign that's in the English and one sign that's in the Malice. And we're anticipating about three thousand dollars in costs. Um, Bruce or David, is there anything more that you want to add to what will be happening with this? Well, I think we're pretty good here on the sign, we'll order them up. Uh, and put them up somewhere on top and, and, and bottom. I guess it depends on Questions on the motion? Answer that. Okay, that's great. On the motion, I'll Uh, if I may, I would suggest that perhaps we wait until we have more community. But if I can, as Commissioner said, um, that um, when the signs are returned to full staff, and that perhaps we can find all of a Underneath the Canadian flag, we'll check with the phone call officer in Coverton. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, we can find a way we kind of have it up there all the time. Uh, that would be you know, a perfect opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Bruce. You, you might not know that the new sign flag is up. If you really want to do that. Oh, yes. Uh, the town offices today when we had a local Indigenous community member uh, come and do a smudging ceremony and uh, we, we raised the, uh, the Wolstow flag
So item six. The Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield receive and file the request. Here, uh, you use some of that up already. Uh, now, regarding donations, uh, a lot of organizations like to ask council for money, uh, and all of them have their own merits. Uh, having the reason I bring that up is currently there is no policy. Uh, that is a grant system. Uh, for groups to ask council for money that's available twice. Encourage council to receive and file. However, we did receive a request. Transparent how council makes up this money, who gets money, who doesn't. If you have a grant system, uh, we can come up with a point system so that everybody. <laughs> so, if I remember last week, we did authorize the money for the Y. Right. So, this one we're just receiving a filing. We're not. <laughs> we want no further action from administration on this one, which is no check going forward. John, can we use this motion to direct you to develop the policy? Yeah, we would change it. Yeah, and, and you just asked me to come back, not this summer. <laughs> <laughs> With a, but it, so that if I could. And hopefully, like right now, my limited experience here is predominantly schools that get it. 
No, I'll just take it as a direction, and then you'll see in the next report that John's behind. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do we have any more questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? The motion is carried. Item 16. Point that the Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield received and filed a request. So moved. Okay. Second. Thank you. Any questions on the motion? There being none, all in favor? Aye. Contrary. Aye. I'm waiting for. And I think it's awesome that there's 912 in there and we're almost at 912. The Council of the Town of Grand Bay Westfield adjourned the meeting at 9 p.m. We have a motion. So moved. We have a second. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Bailman. All in favor? Aye. Contrary, Michael. Your motion is carried. The meeting is adjourned at 9.09 p.m. Thank you, Council and staff. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.